Hey guys, Yarek here, welcome to Emberscape. And yep, I already gathered 10 more pieces of ember with insect inclusions inside and let's inspect every single one of them. And yeah, not every single one is insect inclusion, some of them are plants and yeah, plants are one of my favorite ones and this one is gorgeous, so yep. Before I just begin making uh, pictures, uh, I have to tell that some of these pieces are gonna be rather problematic to make pictures because they are rounded in cabochons. Uh, yeah, these are the most problematic to make macro photography pictures. So for start, let's take <laughs> not a cabochon and something that will make a good picture. This one. So this piece is clearly a wasp and it's tiny, so let's see what we can get under the macro setting. Okay, how big is this wasp? How do you think? I think it's around two millimeters, maybe two with a half. <laughs> so truly tiny, we have to get really close to it like so. Not enough light. A beauty! <laughs> you will see a finished version when the pictures are all done, focus stack and everything because I can't get focus on whole body. The microscope I have to do like 30 pictures and stack them up. This one is focus stacked image for the specimen. It's a gorgeous wasp from the order Hymenoptera. I don't see any mandibles on it and it's not in the best preservation overall with the exception of the eyes. Eyes are really pretty on this one. I don't know exact indication for this wasp. Wasps are insanely diverse group of insects, but its mouth parts looks quite amusing, not gonna lie. There we go, first piece, not so bad. Even though this wasp is not very well preserved, the eyes look fantastic. I think everyone could agree with me on that one. And yeah, let's get out of the way the cabochons, this one. There's a flying insect on the corner and it's on the oval shape side, so light gonna distract us crazy on this one. I will show you how it looks like, uh, probably we won't be able to do pictures for pieces like this one. And the issue is that I can't recut this piece into a flat surface because it's cut that way that the insect is very close to the surface and it's basically impossible to remove the oval shape to make it flat and for insect to be intact after this operation. This is what I see through the microscope. Light refracts like crazy and distorts the insect inside. I need to get lens on the right angle to minimize the distortion, but that's easier said than done. I tried wiggling the piece on the microscope to get any meaningful photos, but it was too much for me, so inspection in close with the phone camera gave me the best results. I'm not sure what kind of insect this is, probably some sort of diptera fly. Honestly, piece itself is nice to look at with naked eye, it's egg shaped, but that's a big no-no if you want macro photos of the specimen. Um, yeah, it was absolutely impossible to make macro pictures on the cabochon because of this uh, rounded angles, I couldn't get uh, the right angle for the light not to distract as much, but <laughs> you could do it a little bit better on video with my, just my phone, because in my hand I can freely wiggle the angles and we can get a little bit better picture of the insect inside. And this is either just some sort of fly or maybe a lace wing. And the same thing is gonna be with these other cabochons. We have three cabochons more, <laughs> which gonna have absolutely same problem. And one of them have amazing crouch. And that uh, piece 
Even though I hate cabochons, this one would make a perfect earring or a ring. Check this out. Super rounded corner, impossible to make good image, but looks decent with naked eye. This is partial metasequoia plant in amber, so yeah, pictures not gonna happen for this one. And this is the roach I was talking about for a ring or a earring, and it's amazing. It's complete, and it's on the very surface. Pictures with microscope looks like this. The light reflects everywhere, the white thingy is the light refraction. So yeah, a lot better to just inspect it in my hand and it will make a good piece of the jewelry with the fossil inclusion in it. Now that cabochons are out of the way, let's make some more macro photography uh, of this super tiny piece. It's the size of my fingernail, a little bit thicker but even a little bit smaller and uh, flying insects in it looks kinda amusing, so let's check it out under magnification. A bit dark, but it looks very hairy or fluffy. This is either a butterfly or rather a night butterfly, the moth. Or it could be a caddis fly from Trichoptera family. Personally, I think it's a butterfly, but I would need to see its proboscis to tell for 100%. And I can't do that, because from the other side we have a diptera fly, which is in the way to see if this insect has a proboscis. Either way, it's cool piece. Next up is the biggest piece of amber, but not the, the, with the biggest inclusion. We see that in this piece, in particularly, there's a lot of stuff going on, uh, partial pieces of all sorts of insect, but sadly not in the best preservation though. Well, let's check it out under the, under the magnification. It's a coleoptera beetle with quite long antennas. Sadly, the preservation is quite poor of this specimen. Lots of details are lost due to oxidation of amber, and there's a crack in amber that goes across this beetle's head. Not sure on the identification when the face of the specimen is not fully visible. Yeah, not the best condition, but it's still cool. Let's check out the, one of the cutest plants I have at the moment. This is also Metasequoia, also partial, but it's very clean. I don't think we will get very cool pictures of this one, but yeah, plants are always look super impressive. Next up we have not exactly cabochons, but they are like half cabochons. And what I think we have here is in one we have like semi-decent size beetle and in the other one is super tiny beetle. And there are some other flying stuff inside. In the way, let's check the smaller beetle, beetle first and right away we will do some pictures for the bigger one. And I was super wrong, this tiny beetle is not beetle at all, it's a super tiny cockroach and it looks like a juvenile from Raphidiomimula family. These fellows are extinct in modern day, and in this piece there's tons of other inclusions, flying insects and the micromite, which I didn't do the photo because with naked eye I didn't see this fellow. This bigger one is straight up amazing, it has nice coloration, I think I know what kind of beetle this one is, <laughs> this is Elateridae click beetle, previous one shockingly was not a beetle, it was a baby cockroach, but it were looking quite amusing, this one is cool though, some parts of the legs from the sides, this is neat. So it looks decently light up, and let's just get some more 
focus on it. Yeah, the car of is uh, reflecting light quite nicely, but the piece is quite fuzzy and this cabochon thing is not helping. You see these white lines? This is the light refraction. Also, fuzziness also comes from light refraction. But if we get close enough, we see carapace nicely, but the head is under the layer. Let's check what kind of quality we can get from focus stacking this one. Click beetles can actually snap its neck, which makes a click sound, hence the name. They do that to scare off the predators, and it's also useful if the beetle falls on its back. That neck snapping action helps the beetle to get back on its feet. This is very diverse family. In modern day, there is around 10,000 different species. Biggest ones get up to 2 cm in body size. Quite honestly, I was thinking we will get worse quality of pictures from this one. It was quite decent, uh, even though it's like cabochon shape. So the last piece is gonna be my favorite one. And <laughs> yeah, it's a plant, of course, but this one looks quite uncommon. Very cool. Also, lots of stuff going on inside. Any chance this could be pores with the black stuff on top. The plant itself, it's magnificent and the flow lines of ember also sweet. There we go in all its glory. Fantastic. Whoa, do I think I see some sort of hairs on the plant? We will inspect them a little bit better under the microscope, but this plant, <laughs> it's a winner. It seems I am not yet blind, because this plant is indeed hairy. Bunch of white hairs throughout the whole plant. It looks rather uncommon, but I know for a fact that it is a fern, one of the most ancient plants on the planet. Preservation is stunning, love every single detail I see on it. This is personal collection worthy piece, and that's exactly where it's gonna be. In my personal collection, it will stay forever. One of the best plants preserva preservation wise too, considering it's almost 100 million years old. Well, that was fun and it's quite sad because I ran out, out of pieces of amber to make pictures of really fast, I didn't even notice how fast the time went. Either way, this is it for the video, thanks for watching, I hope we will get some more exciting pieces for the next video, and yeah, thanks for watching and see you next time, bye!